Hey guys, so here's my thoughts on this 50 versus 30 year mortgage thing. At the end of the day, there's a lot of reasons why, why you might not wanna do the 50 year mortgage, I get it. But my argument is you have to have good intel, you have to have the right data. So you have to look at this in a vacuum first and be able to analyze the two options. And then from there, you, you have a foundation. From there, you layer on the variables. Oh, peace of mind. Oh, I don't want to pay 50 years, blah, blah, blah. Or I'm going to move in 10 years. Well, yeah, those variables change. Or what I'm going to tell you is when you compare, you have to compare the same amount of cash flow streams, right? So the 50 year, if you compare it properly, you're investing any little difference into a savings account, or I'm sorry, not a savings account, an investment account. Now, if the argument is like, oh, this, you know, I will never do that. I will never invest, have the discipline to invest in another account. Well, those are valid variables, but those are very personalized variables. So my argument is know the data, know what the data says, know what the intel is, and then you make your decisions based on the variables of your situation, or maybe you're advising someone or whatever. So if you compare anything to a 50 year mortgage, you have to go out for 50 years and compare the full 50. So think of it this way, you clone yourself in two scenarios. One scenario, you're gonna do a 30 year, the other scenario, you're gonna do a 50 year. And I've been doing this this comparison for, for many years. Usually it's 15 versus 30, that's the big argument. So let's just say your, let's just say your 30 year mortgage for a house. I don't have the math right in front of me. Let, let's just say it's 2,500 bucks principal and interest, the P&I. We're not worried about in, uh, insurance. We're not worried about taxes. We're not worried about your HOA fees or blah, blah, blah. We're not worried about that for the scenario that we're looking at. We're looking at the raw data. Why? Because guess what? Both clones, both scenarios, it's the same house. So I don't care if you pay cash for your house, you're still paying the same taxes. You're paying the same insurance as you are for a 50 year or 30 year. So those are constant, those are sunk costs. So let's clear that out of the way and look at the core data, the, the mortgage, the amortization schedule. So let's just say the 30 year is 2,500 bucks a month. Let's say the 50 year is, uh, I don't know, 2,100 bucks a month, right? We could pull math and, and get detailed. I can do that later if you want. Let's just say that 50 years, 2,100 bucks a month, the 30 years, 2,500 bucks a month. You have to compare over the 50 years, over the full time horizon to have an apples to apples comparison. So what that means is if there's a $400 Delta, so there's $400 of difference between the 2,500 and the 21, the assumption is, well, I'm gonna be paying 2,500 bucks anyway, so I need to compare that full 2,500 in both scenarios. So that means that $400 extra, the 50, um, 50 year scenario, you're gonna invest that. Let's just say you invested in a 10% investment, all right? Again, same clone, same scenario, same investments, all that stuff. So 400 bucks a month for 50 years invested in 10%. Okay, so you have to look at, you can look at the amortization, then you look at this bucket over here, your investment bucket. How about the 30 year? You're paying the 2,500 bucks a month for 30 years. However, you still gotta analyze that over 50 years. Well, how do you do that? That is, whoop, make sure I have the right directions here. What you do is you pay 2,500 bucks for 30 years and then there's still 20 years. And then you're gonna, so those 20 years, you're gonna put the 2,500 bucks into the same investment every month for 20 years. And you're gonna look at that total. So you're gonna look at the two totals. And what you're gonna find is the 50 year yeah, if you look at a 30 year amortization interest and a 50 year amortization interest, what all these, everyone's doing online, all the financial gurus that don't understand how time value money works and, and the comparisons, they say, oh, well the 30 year is, you know, $200,000 of interest and the 50 year is $350,000 of interest. Therefore, obviously the 50 year is stupid. Well, that's very short sighted in one piece because the way I'm showing you the 50 years can have millions of more dollars in that investment bucket, okay? So that's the math. The other things to consider is how time value money works. If you're paying 2,500 bucks a month, or in the case of a 50 year, you're paying 2,100 bucks a month, 
in 50 years or 49 years and 11 months, you got one more payment. Guess what, how much it's worth? Well, it's worth 2,100 bucks. It's still 2,100. But the value of that's far different. That value of that might be like if you, if you're paying 500 bucks today or 600 bucks or 700 bucks, we can look at the time value money or the value of that. So the banks are the ones that lose here, guys, because they want you to do a 15 year. They want you to pay off your mortgage in five years because you're throwing all your extra cash flow at that thing. And they're able to get more powerful money and recycle it because they understand it's more valuable. The longer you draw out the loan, the better it is for a borrower. Now, again, there's other variables. Maybe you want peace of mind. Maybe you have a bunch of money, you get a windfall. I'm not discounting those things. I'm not giving you an absolute, but there are things to think about. What if you're doing a, what if you're doing like a, a rental and this goes for any mortgage, actually, if you know, you, you, you're renting the house out, so you're paying 2,100 bucks. Let's just say you're renting the house out for, uh, 2,500 bucks a month. Well, again, for 50 years, year 49 and 11 months, you're paying the 2,100 bucks a month, but guess what the rent is? You're probably charging 11,000 a month for rent because the rents go up with inflation. So it hedges inflation. So it goes up with inflation, right? So if you're renting a home and it's every, every year or two, it goes up 5% or whatever, that's hedging inflation. However, the payment is a fixed cost that stays the same. So understanding the value of that, you can look at the paper, look at the data and say, okay, I understand the math. Now, does it fit my investment goals? Does it fit my personal kind of code of how I do finances? Maybe it doesn't, totally fine. But I think it's important to do the math because what I'm finding is a lot of people don't understand how the basic math works. Oh, and I'll add one more thing. And if you wanna say, well, but the 50 is gonna have a higher interest than the 30, well, maybe it will. Maybe it's gonna be, what's it gonna be? It's all assumptions, right? So do the apples to apples across the board, then add in your assumptions. Let's say, all right, well, what if it's only 10 basis points more? So 0.1% more on the, on, the, on the loan. I don't know. What if it's a half a percent more? You add those layers and you still see, and you can, you can see what the better option is objectively, and then add your layers personally. Hope that helps.